TNT? TNT? I guess we can push this, uh, take this off to the 67 constraints at this point. My uh, copy, I'll talk with Terry and tell him paper to follow. Thank you. 23 minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the hold at T minus 9 minutes. The solid rocket booster retrieval ships, Liberty and Freedom, are standing by right now in the Atlantic Ocean. And attention on the net. Uh, this is the NTD uh, for OTC, TBC, TTC, LTS, MILA, STM, Safety Console, SPE, LRD, SRO, CDR, and CGLS. Our final launch window opening for today will be 062814 GMT. And we'll close at 063305 GMT. The lock strain back hold time is 3 minutes 33 seconds based on engine performance. And that's step 10, 10, 1085. OTC copies. BC? TBC copies. PTC? PTC copies. LPS? LPS copy. Mila? Mila copies. STM? STM copies. Safety? Safety copies. SPE? SP copies. LRD? LRD copies. SRO? L SRO copies. CDR? CDR. And GLS. GLS copies. That was NASA Test Director Steve Payne updating the launch team and the flight crew on the designated launch time during the window. The solid rocket booster retrieval ships departed from Hangar AF at Cape Canaveral at 4 p.m. on Sunday and will return to Port Canaveral at mid afternoon on Wednesday if weather allows the SRB retrieval operations to begin on schedule after today's launch. Their location is 140 nautical miles northeast of the Cape Canaveral Lighthouse off the coast of Jacksonville. They will tow the boosters through the locks to the Banana River and then turn north for about four miles to the Hangar AF booster disassembly facility on Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. At that time, the boosters will be removed from the water wash down and then on Thursday the inspections will begin. Right now they are performing a radar and visual search of the impact area to ensure that it is clear of ships and are relaying the sea conditions and weather reports back to the shuttle weather officer. The solid rocket boosters are burning 11,000 pounds of propellant every second until they are jettisoned at 2 minutes 5 seconds into the flight. At that point they will be at an altitude of 30 miles but will continue upward for about another 70 seconds to about 42 miles before they begin their free fall toward the Atlantic Ocean below at a speed of 230 miles an hour. LTC PVD. At about three miles in altitude, a drogue chute parachute will deploy to begin slowing the fall to the water, and then about a mile above the surface, the main chutes deploy, creating a more gradual fall. The impact at the ocean occurs at a speed of about 51 miles an hour, and the boosters are usually about seven miles apart. The total descent takes about seven minutes. Once the booster recovery operation begins, it takes about six hours before the ships are ready to begin towing them back to Port Canaveral. NTD, CMTC. Ed? Can I have a hard line number for you? 73904. Copy.
Weather still looks good. 19 minutes remaining in the hold. Today a total of about nine Raywin Sawn weather balloons were released which collect data on temperature, humidity, wind speed and direction and barometric pressure up to about 100,000 feet. And six gym spheres were also released to provide highly accurate data on wind speed and direction up to about 60,000 feet. That data is used very late in the countdown so that the flight dynamics officer can select the proper computer program that will allow the space shuttle's onboard computers to respond properly to the wind conditions as it climbs through the lower atmosphere. Meanwhile, the weather at the overseas transatlantic emergency sites has been watched very closely during the countdown by the NOAA National Weather Service Space Flight Meteorology Group located at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. They forecast the weather for landing once the space shuttle lifts off, no matter where it should land. All communications here in the firing room has switched over to the air to ground channel so any discussion that's going on we're hearing on this channel and of course right now we're not hearing any which is a good indication that we're in a good posture for a launch at 228 this morning. Fifteen minutes remaining in the hold.
OTC CHPD. Go ahead. I can give you step 1134, confidence text complete. Okay, copy. 3D, Houston flight, go ahead. Do you think we're going to need the ascent data crew update? Negative, that is not required today. Copy, 1110 not performed. Arch Director Mike Leinbach has just gotten a quick update on the weather from Shuttle Weather Officer Todd McNamara, and uh, everything is stable, pretty much as it has been. Still not uh, any red constraints on the board. Lowest clouds right now are between 6,300 and 6,500 feet, and forecast not to go any lower than 6,000. Shuttle training aircraft with astronaut Steve Lindsay shooting approaches is now going out to his terminal support point into a racetrack pattern off at some distance from the launch pad to be in place to observe the launch. Ten minutes remaining in this plan built in hold. MS one, OTC, outer ground one. Go ahead, three minutes one. Activate D ten recorder. And work. Step eleven seventeen. Copy. NTD, range weather on 212. Go ahead. Thank you. Just making sure we had calm. I uh, hadn't heard any chatter. I thought I might have a calm problem. Oh, well. No, this is a good, good thing this time.
and OTC MS-1, the V-10 recorder is activated. Copy. Eight minutes remaining in this planned 45-minute built-in hold. The airspace and offshore areas have been confirmed clear for launch by the range. ISL, JRPS in Houston flight, perform the L-15 recorder activation, ISL. ISL copies. JRPS? JRPS copy. And Houston flight. Houston flight copies. And attention on the net. This is the NTD conducting the launch status check. All stations verify ready to resume count and go for launch. OTC? OTC is go. TBC? TBC is go. PTC? PTC is go. LPS? LPS is go. Houston flight? Houston flight is go. Mila? Mila is go. STM? STM is go. Safety console? Safety is go. SPE? SP is go. LRD? LRD is go. SRO? SRO is go. You have a range clear to launch. Be in CDR? CDR, let's go. Launch director, entity. Launch director. The launch team is ready to proceed. Okay, I copy, Steve, thank you. Chief processing engineer, verify no constraints to launch. Uh, no constraints, Mike, we're ready. Okay, Charlie, thanks. KC safety and mission assurance. KC safety and mission assurance is ready to go, Mike. Thank you. Payload launch manager. Okay, Mike, on behalf of our international partners from the Japanese and Canadian Space Agency, your ISS team is ready to proceed. Okay, thanks, Gennaro. Range weather. Weather has no constraints for launch. Thank you, Todd. And Ops Manager. The launch director, Ops Manager, uh, Mike, the MMT is not working any issues. You are go for launch. Thank you, sir. Endeavor launch director. Go ahead, Mike. Okay, Dom, uh, vehicle's in great shape. The weather is go. In fact, it should be interesting. Uh, flight for you to punch through the clouds tonight. So on behalf of the KC launch team, I'd like to wish you good luck, Godspeed, and we'll see you back here in 16 days. Well, Mike, you just made people smile around the world, and you've got seven smiling faces on board here. We'd like to give a special thanks to our families, KSC's Endeavor whole crew, our friends in Houston and Canada, and for JAXA, we'd like to say konnichiwa, domo arigato, and bonsai. God truly has blessed us with a beautiful night here, Mike, to launch, so let's light him up and give him a show. That sounds great, Tom. Thank you very much. Good luck to you all. And NTD, with that, you are clear to launch Endeavor. Copy, clear to launch. Thank you. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the built-in hold.
Nine attention on the net. The countdown clock will start in three minutes. Two minutes until release of the hold. Once we get out of the hold, we'll be activating the onboard flight data recorders. NTD ISO, go ahead. I can give you step 1118. Copy. Copy activation complete. Copy activation complete. Countdown clock will start in one minute. NTD CCSC. Go ahead. I just requested to perform a quick comm check on the air to air UHF with the crew. Copy. Go ahead. And we'll pick up in 30 seconds. Once we come out of the countdown, the ground launch sequencer will be controlling. 10 seconds. The countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one. Mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. GLS auto sequence has been initiated. Computers in the firing room now controlling. They will hand off to Endeavor's computers at T minus 31 seconds. TLT OTC connect to central buses to fuel cells for your checklist. OTC PLT, that's in work. The crew access arm will be retracted in about 30 seconds. CLS is go for orbiter access arm retract. Endeavor OTC, we celebrate your international mission as you expand the station into our first global village in space. Okay, Endeavor copy. That was orbiter test conductor Jeff Lauffer from United Space Alliance. Well, we 
going into the pre-start of the auxiliary power units, the pilot uh, will be commanded to do that task in about half a minute. KFDS SOTC, start APU display recorders. KFDS, copy. JRPS copy, recorders running. PLT OTC, perform APU pre start. OTC, PLT, that's in work. OTC, PLT, APU pre-start complete, three great talkbacks. Copy. APUs will be started at T minus five minutes in less than 30 seconds. We'll be starting the data recorders here in the firing room at that time and arming the solid rocket booster safe and arm devices. T minus five minutes and counting. CLS is go for orbiter APU start. PLT OTC perform APU start. OTC, PLT, that's in work. CDR OTC reconfigure heaters. CDR welcome. Terminating locks replenishment at this time, starting liquid oxygen drain back. We'll be starting the final main engine helium purge of the main engines. Start is complete and the heater reconfig is also complete. Copy. CLS is go for purge sequence four. That's the main engine, main engine helium purge. Starting the orbiter aerosurface profile test of the flight controls. And in less than 10 seconds we'll be configuring the main engines. We'll be going the doing putting the engine through a steering check before we put them in start position. See them now going through a gimbal check or a steering check, steering test. Back now in the start position. Here we go for ET, LO2, pressurization. OTC clear, caution, warning, memory, verify, no unexpected errors. OTC, PLT, that's in work. About to retract the gaseous oxygen vent arm or the beanie cap. PLT caution and warning memory is clear with no unexpected errors. Copy and Endeavor, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. Endeavor copies visors and O2 flow, thanks. 
CLS is there for ET, LH2, pressurization. Still showing no constraints to launch. T minus one minute and counting. Final steering check of the solid rocket booster commands is being performed. Turning off the SRB joint heaters. Closing the liquid oxygen and LH2 fill and drain valves. Coming up on the handoff to Endeavour. T minus 31 seconds. The handoff has occurred. 25. 20. SRB nozzle gimbal check. Arming the firing chain now. Sound suppression water system is armed. Rain safety systems armed. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And liftoff of Endeavour. Going where east and west do meet at the International Space Station. Houston now controlling. Houston Endeavour, roll program. Roger roll, Endeavour. The roll maneuver is complete. Endeavour is in a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. The Florida coast gets an early sunrise as Endeavour heads out on a course to intercept the International Space Station in a day and a half. Endeavour, your go at throttle up. There's no action on the left RCS messages. We'll have words later. No way. Go at throttle up. Copy, no action on the RCS message, Matt. Endeavour's heading out 51,000 feet in altitude, 10 miles from the Kennedy Space Center, downrange 11 miles. Three hydraulic systems in good shape, as are the electricity producing fuel cells. Three good uh, main engines at 104% of rated thrust. Coming up on uh, staging, the burnout of these twin solid rocket boosters at 2 minutes 5 seconds. SRB separation confirmed. The onboard guidance system has done its job of settling out and any of the dispersions introduced at booster separation. Endeavour is 50 miles from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 200,000 feet or 38 miles, traveling 3,900 miles per hour. Endeavour, two-engine Zaragoza. Zaragoza. Three good main engines, but Endeavour can reach Zaragoza in Spain in the event of a single engine failure. Time three minutes into the flight. Endeavour is traveling 
4,300 miles per hour, 82 miles from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 48 miles. All systems aboard the uh, shuttle are in good shape. The three main engines still at 104% of rated thrust. Three good hydraulic systems and fuel cells producing electricity for the vehicle. Three and a half minutes into the flight, Endeavour is 115 miles downrange at an altitude of 55 miles or approaching 300,000 feet. Endeavor, negative return. Endeavor, negative return. Endeavor for Dom, the FES is shut down. We'll take step one of a VAP out T high. VAP out T high, step one. Endeavor can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure, but all three are in good shape. Crew performing a procedure to recover the flash evaporator system. That's uh, no issue for launch. The vehicle is 214 miles downrange. Endeavor, press to ATO. Endeavor copies. Press to ATO. Endeavor can reach orbit on two engines should one fail. However, all three are still at uh, full throttle. Time five minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Endeavor is 294 miles downrange at an altitude of 67 miles. Endeavor, single engine ops three. Endeavor, single engine ops three. Endeavor, press to Miko and single engine Zaragoza 104. Endeavor, press to Miko, single engine Zaragoza 104. Endeavor can reach a safe orbit on two engines now as the vehicle is rolling to a heads up position for uh, good communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system. Endeavor, your shutdown plan is nominal. You are go for the plus X, no go for the pitch. And go for the plus X. Six minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, Endeavour is 486 miles from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 65 miles. Endeavour, single engine press 104. Endeavour, single engine press 104. And Endeavour can reach orbit on one engine should two fail at this point, but all three are still well, performing well. Okay, Jim, thanks. Flash evaporator system operating in its backup or standby or secondary system. All uh, cooling on board uh, in good shape. Hydraulic systems, fuel cells also in good shape. Seven minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Standing by for uh, throttling to maintain the three times uh, gravity on the vehicle and uh, the crew on board.
Endeavour is traveling 16,000 miles per hour, downrange 780 miles, altitude 64 miles. Standing by for main engine cutoff confirmation. Main engine cutoff confirmed. Standing by for separation from the external tank. Endeavor uh, flying away from the external tank. The new uh, flash system uh, illuminating the external tank as the orbiter moves away from... Uh, Nominal Miko, OMS-1 is not required. Delta copy. OMS-1, not required. And Dom, we have no follow-ups for you at this time for a out T-high or left RCS jets. Flight Director Brian Lunny polling his uh, ascent team for any deltas to the uh, ascent checklist now that uh, Endeavour is safely on orbit. System. That's essentially to provide uh, cooling through the flash evaporator system until the payload bay doors are opened and the uh, radiators are activated that lie in each of the uh, right and left payload bay doors. The vehicle's uh, getting good cooling and uh, all the other systems are in good shape. They're evaluating the uh, signatures that were seen on uh, some of the left RCS jets during the ascent. Early uh, indications are that it uh, is being traced to a card in uh, electronics box. Uh, more information obviously will be forthcoming after the data is looked at, but it had no um, issue whatsoever with the uh, safe ascent of Endeavour and uh, insertion into orbit. The uh, next um, on-orbit uh, maneuver will be the OMS-2 or Orbital Maneuvering System burn uh, upcoming in just under 26 minutes that will uh, basically put Endeavour in an operational orbit. Flight controllers see good cooling on uh, all three of the auxiliary uh, power units. 
So shortly the crew will be given a go to shut those down. Endeavour Houston for the white pages. Go ahead, Jim. Dom, you have a go for APU hide shutdown when you get there. On page 3-4, tail only control is not required. Under FES and heater activation, you can delete the L1 step. We'll take AC bus sensors as written and we'll be ready for 105 on time. Here we copy all on the Fesson heater. We're going to delete the all one step. That's a good readback, Dom. The three hydraulic systems board Endeavor have now been shut down. They will remain uh, off until used uh, the day before landing. One of those will be powered up for uh, the day before landing checkouts of the flight control systems. Targeting the uh, orbital maneuvering system engine burn uh, for about uh, 21 and a half minutes from now. That will uh, put Endeavour in an operational Endeavor orbit. Houston, in one minute, we will be unable to speak to you for one minute due to spreading. Endeavour, copy. And Dom, just a quick tag up on OMS 2. Your TIG right now is 38 colon 30. We expect to burn the onboard targets. And for pages 3-6 and 3-7, we have no deltas. That's a good readback. Spacecraft communicator Jim Dutton providing uh, updates to the crew on the upcoming OMS-2 burn that will uh, put Endeavour in a 140 by 98 statute mile operational orbit as it uh, begins its chase to catch up with the International Space Station. Also, the uh, spreading call means that the uh, uh, the uh, Communication signal is being spread uh, across the uh, 
rather than uh, targeting so that uh, doesn't uh, interfere with any telecommunications uh, systems over Europe. Copy Endeavor, we're watching. Endeavors uh, launch on time at uh, 1 28 and 14 seconds uh, Central Daylight Time Tuesday puts it on course to uh, rendezvous and dock with the International Space Station. On uh, Wednesday evening, the uh, approximate docking time 10.20 p.m. Central Time Wednesday Endeavor for Dom, we like your onboard targets. We would like to update your TIG to 38 colon 30, and then we'll be ready for you to load. Copy uh, 3830 and uh, ready to load. That's a good read back box. The Ascent uh, Flight Control Team uh, here in Mission Control Houston on consoles Monday evening about 7.30 to uh, oversee the uh, safe launch of Endeavour this morning. environmental uh, systems officer here in Mission Control discussing with Flight Director Brian Lunny a, um, a procedure to uh, check out the primary uh, A system of the flash evaporator uh, system on board the vehicle used for cooling when the payload bay doors are closed. They'll perform that uh, check out after the doors are opened and the uh, radiators are activated providing uh, cooling through the radiator system and the Freon coolant loops. 
the uh, flash evaporator system operating fine on the uh, backup or the Pry B uh, system right now. Check on the headset. Endeavor Houston, we've got you loud and clear. How us? Loud and clear, Jim. We're going to load them up. The targets, we got that 3830 in there. That sounds great, Dom. Endeavor Commander Dom Gorey on his uh, fourth voyage into space, uh, loading the targets for the upcoming orbital maneuvering system burn. The uh, Ohms burn uh, fires the twin uh, Ohms engines, one on either side of the tail, each producing about 6,000 pounds of thrust. Endeavor Houston for the white pages, page 3-8. We have no deltas, and we're ready for the maneuver when you are. Okay, Jim, on 3 bad. 3-8, uh, we'll press on. And we're uh, standing by to switch back to the Kennedy Space Center for launch replays uh, of Endeavour's climb to orbit just uh, 26 minutes ago as the crew continues to step through procedures headed toward the upcoming uh, operational orbital burn with the orbital maneuvering system engines. That uh, burn upcoming in 12 and a half minutes.